Hey guys, it's Wednesday. Um, I'm a little stressed the last couple days. It's been very stressful because um, I found a really nice position um, at a college uh, in Madison where my family lives. Uh, and uh, if I'm really honest with myself, I'm probably less qualified for this than any of the jobs I've applied for so far just because I've never um, seen anyone doing this job who hasn't been like 40 years old and like already a librarian because it's uh, kind of like the supervisor uh, for the weekend and night shifts uh, at a library. So like the person who's watching over all the student employees making sure they're not goofing off and stuff. Uh, but uh, yeah, sent out all like reference checks to make sure everyone's on board and uh, gosh, like, I, like um, one of them, one of my references was uh, the teacher for Alexis and I are young adult lit class, and gosh, she's so cool. Because uh, I sent it out, she's like, oh no, it's totally fine, I know you're going to find the right job for you, and just keep using my name till you get the right one. And doesn't the name of that college sound like a, make a good young adult lit uh, setting? And I'm like, God, you're so awesome. So uh, it's turning out that young adult lit class is like one of the best class I took at WSU just for the teacher. And uh, Alexis, that really sucks that the entire Pullman trip was kind of a waste. I'm looking forward to the video though. And uh, yeah, I totally agree about uh, driving being kind of like this little zen place and time. Uh, you can just kind of go, I don't know, it's like the process of going towards your goal and being able to not have to think about other things. Uh, and Becky, uh, it took me a while to remember what you're talking about with uh, framing, because uh, it is kind of a bad word in a sense, because frame can mean so much. But I think you mean framing as like, um, like the the backdrop and context of a story. So like like the background and the plot and stuff. But I, I was talking about framing more as um, like a synonym, uh, maybe a little more like a metaphor for. Like an actual physical frame, like something you would put a photo in and put it on your wall. Uh, and just to signify uh, our human tendency, I guess, to find things are more important when we treat them like they're more important. So it's the difference between like peeling off a Campbell's tomato soup label and like tossing it on the ground, and the difference between blowing up the image and putting it in a frame in an art gallery. Uh, so, in that sense, it's framing. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not really sure what else to say about that. Uh, it's just, I don't know, one of our quirks, I guess, is people and finding things meaningful. Uh, but also about um, the, the, the quote that you noticed from the other video about, uh, you know, you write a hundred thousand words of crap and then uh, to get to the, the good stuff. But, um, and I agree with that, but... Um, I wanted to kind of address it in case it was being taken to meant um, that you write a hundred thousand words of fan fiction to get to the good fiction at the end. Because uh, in that sense, the quote, it isn't an excuse for bad fan fiction, it's an excuse for bad writing in general. Because no matter how good a writer you are, no matter what you're writing, uh, you're going to write crap. It's inevitable, it's just part of the learning process. Um, you're never going to be absolutely happy with everything you write, but now and then you do write something good. And and that's just, a, you know, learning. You you have to make some bad things before you figure out what to do. And uh, if you're a good writer, or if you have potential to be a good writer, uh, you're probably a bit of a perfectionist, and you probably are never going to think what you write is as good as it can be, like the absolute best. Uh, so in that sense, it isn't even an excuse for bad fanfiction, it's just kind of a statement of fact. Uh, that, uh, and part of the thing about fanfiction is that it's, you know, it's not official, it's just something people do as a hobby in their spare time. And uh, when you look at a published novel in a bookstore or a library, what you're seeing is the end result of a lot of crap. So what you're seeing is not the 100,000 words, but the end product. And sometimes not always that, because people do publish a lot of crap. Uh, but with uh, a good book, what you see is what that author has struggled to make um, through the process of all of the rough drafts and all of the, uh, 
you know, all the learning, all of the really bad writing they wrote when they were 12, which for fan fiction authors, uh, it isn't um, always that final draft, it's that process. So yeah, you do see a lot of crap, which uh, we're usually spared when we read anything else. Uh, but yeah, it isn't just fan fiction, it's, it's everything. Uh, so, um, I feel a little bit of a hypocrite saying this, because it's something that bothers me a lot and stops me from being productive and being creative like I want to. But you, you can't be afraid of making something bad. Um, and that's a really hard mindset to get over, especially if, you know, you do want things to be good. Because it's, it's inevitable. You are going to write bad things. Uh, but you can't let that stop you from improving and being better and enjoying it. Uh, I mean... I don't know, in some way I'm like I, I'm never really going to be happy with everything I write, but uh, if you let that stop you from writing, then you stop improving. So Becky, if you want to write something, then go for it. The only way to find out what works and what doesn't, and to really get a good grasp on the process of writing and you know what works, what doesn't, is by trying it. It isn't, um, it isn't something you can just do as like a thought experiment. You just have to get down and dirty with it and find out what works. Uh, but listening to you talk about um, tragedy made me smile. It made me think of uh, the Dead Island trailer for some reason, which, Becky, if you haven't seen it, you should. It's uh, it's quite brilliant. And, um, you know, since you are thinking about tragedy, uh, if you want a homework assignment, I would suggest watching the Dead Island trailer and then watching um, a version, you can find them on YouTube, where people have put the trailer in chronological order and watching them both and seeing which one is more effective and why. Because, uh, you know, tragedy's kind of intricate thing. But, it, you know, it, it cheats in a sense, like, because it is aud audiovisual and uh, a lot of the tragedy to that trailer is just the soundtrack, which is so, um, so horribly uh, heartrending. But Tragedy is really interesting. I have a lot of feelings about tragedy and comedy, the balance between the two, and what makes, you know, what's really interesting and pivotal to the two. Uh, it's kind of one of, it's one of my pet topics, one of my pet themes that really interests me, but the, one of the keys to tragedy is measured suffering, and uh, it's like the study of loss in a character, I suppose. I mean, there's a difference, too, between kind of tragedy as we use it, uh, as a lay term and tragedy as like a very specific um, term used um, for a very specific kind of plot, like you know actual like tragic comedy that you'd use for a Greek play or a Shakespeare play, and just like tragedy as you would use. Uh, well, I think you guys know what I mean, but just uh, something can be a tragedy without actually being adhering to the limitations of being a classic Greek tragedy, for instance. Um, but the characters have to struggle, they have to suffer. And when you as the author um, think it couldn't possibly get any worse for them, you have to make it worse. And then you have to make them fail even as they're struggling. I think probably one of the key concepts to making a really efficient tragedy or to, make, to really pulling people in is um, making sure the, the personal human aspect is there, like people the readers really connect with the character, but also that you never uh, really give up on hope exactly, because what makes tragedies really bad, I think, is not that people are suffering, but that there's the the faint glimmer of the possibility that they might succeed, and then they don't, and it's so much worse. And then you can also, if you're good or if you want to, have that moment where, you know, all hope is lost, which... Uh, like in the story you mentioned Becky would be like when he shoots his family, it's like there's no going back from that. Uh, but but it can't be too much. It's um, it's the very nature of tragedy and comedy, I think, um, built into us. Uh, that uh, in their purest forms is probably one of the most uh, I don't know profound things I'll, I'll probably say in a video. But at their at their most pure, tragedy and comedy are. Uh, unendurable. I mean, you think about, I don't know, what you, what you experience, what you feel when you hear about, um, like the Holocaust, for example. There is 
nothing funny about it. I mean, it's it's so pure. And then you imagine people that have actually been through that or something like that, any kind of, you know, war or genocide or anything like that. And um, it's, well, it's very difficult to make horror movies, you know, unless you're going to make them like a really insincere blockbuster or something. Or if you uh, are, uh, what am I going to say, and determined to give it a happy ending you know, just kind of throw a bone to people, but if you're honest about it and you don't give it a happy ending, it's very difficult to market that, unless, like, you have a very, I don't know, masochistic, um, audience, or you're just very determined to tell the truth, uh, and I've watched movies like that, and they were just, I don't know, they kind of broke you inside, but, uh, you did get to the end of them, uh, just because of, uh, clever editing, I suppose, but it managed to convince you to actually stick through to the end even though you knew that it wasn't going to end well. Like, uh, I don't know, a lot of things with historic moments like, uh, stories of massacres or genocides or, you know, something like the Titanic. Why do people watch that movie? It isn't because they're curious about what's going to happen to the ship, uh, but it's not a very good example on one hand because they, they don't make it a tragedy because they do give the human element a happy ending at the end. <sighs> but I feel like I'm kind of talking around in circles, so I'm going to leave it off because even a 12 minute video takes hours and hours to upload to the internet. Um, but I will, I look forward to the Pullman video uh, tomorrow, I think. And uh, talking to you guys and seeing you guys again. Uh, so yeah, bye.